Just give me some of your votes. You overcoming doubts and disappointment, the, the two Ds. Scripture shares with us several key events that took place before the cross and after the resurrection in reference to Jesus' time. Uh, or when we study scripture before the cross, we notice that three unique things happen during Holy Week. We know that Judas betrayed him, Peter denied him, and the other ten disciples deserted him. Judas betrayed him, Peter denied him, and the other ten deserted him. The focus during Holy Week, which was last week, has always been around Judas betraying Jesus and Peter denying him. Little has been focused over the fact that the other ten might not have denied him, might not have betrayed him, but they sure enough deserted him. In Holy Week, the final week of Jesus, these 12 men who were part of Jesus' mentoring program for three years, was part of VGC for three years, ends up either betraying him, denying him, or deserting him. After three years of being at VGC, after three years of sitting under the word, a Judas betrayed, a Peter denied, and other disciples desert. We know that after the cross, which is post-resurrection, the coward Peter, after getting filled with the Holy Ghost, become the courageous Peter. The Peter who denied Jesus not just once but three times, after Pentecost, preaches the greatest sermon, and 3,000 people got saved. Peter is restored or given a second chance after denying Jesus three times. I believe that if Judas didn't hang himself, that even Judas could have been redeemed. Jesus shows up after getting up on Easter Sunday morning, last Sunday, shows up at the Sea of Tiberias where the disciples have gone back to their own lifestyle. Jesus showed up with the intention of reinstating the disciples who failed and particularly Peter. He reinstates Peter to the position that he had fallen from by asking him three important questions. Peter, do you love me more than these? Now my brothers and sisters, Jesus already knows the answer. He just wants to know if Peter knows the answer. And finally, at the end of the third question, Peter said, Lord, only you know. Jesus reinstates Peter, give him his assignment without any probation and without any suspension. Many of us, when we reinstate people, we put them on a probation period. When we reinstate people we give them 30 days to prove it if we when we reinstate people we say i'm watching you for a year but jesus reinstate peter completely he treats peter like if peter never messed up in the first place peter in fact is given a greater assignment if you love me i want you to feed my sheep i want you to Take care of my people. I want you to love my people. The Savior now moves from Resurrection Sunday to restoration. He restores Peter. But my brothers and sisters, while Peter and Judas failed publicly, we know that Peter and Judas was not the only disciple that messed up that week. Several of the other disciples during Passover or past Passion Week ran away or abandoned Jesus. They lost their passion. They deserted him. One of the disciples that took flight. See, there's Peter who took fight. And there's another disciple who take flight. Whenever you experience doubt or disappointment, you either come out fighting or you take flight. You either run into the storm or you run away from it. Uh, 
In fact, I was reading an article that says in the world there's only two groups of people. There is jackhammers and hummingbirds. Ask your neighbor and say, which one are you? There's a, there's, a, there's a jackhammer. There's a jackhammer who just stays where they are and you just drill down. You just drill down. You drill down in deep concrete. Whenever you experience disappointment, you sometimes end up being like a jackhammer. You, you drill down. You shut down. You're not going to let nobody else in. You're not going to let anybody treat you. You're, you're a jackhammer. Oh, for some of us, you are a hummingbird. A hummingbird doesn't stay in the same spot. A hummingbird flies. Lord, help me up. And you fly from church to church, from ministry to ministry, from pastors to pastors, from prophet to prophet, because you've experienced something that you don't have the courage to face it, so you take flight. Preach, Pastor Jazz. Some of you, you take flight. You run out of relationships and run out of marriages and run out of ministry and run out of all organization uh, you 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 quit stuff not not because you don't love God is because you have experienced some form of a disappointment one of the disciples who is the opposite of Peter y'all still here one of the disciples who is the opposite of Peter Peter takes Peter fight but this disciple takes flight he came he came this morning. His battle or his struggle is not like Judas who betrayed J Judas. It's not like Judas who betrayed Jesus. It's not the battle of denying Jesus like Peter. But his battle is internal. I promise I'm going somewhere. I said his battle is where? His battle is internally. He, he's an introvert. Don't raise your hand. He's an introvert. So he, his battle is not external and God deliver us from the church that judges people because you see my struggle externally but you don't even know you may be sitting next to a pedophile inwardly. God help me up in here that you judge me because I got pregnant and you can see the evidence on the outside but, but what about the person who's addicted to pornography? Preach, Pastor Jazz. You, you, you judge me because you base my sexuality based on what I got on. But, but you don't even know about the lipstick lesbian. Preach, Pastor Jazz. You, you, you don't know. You don't know. You, um, y'all ain't ready for me today. You don't, you don't know about the one who looks like Beyonce. But y'all ain't ready for me. Looks on the outside. That's why you can't judge a book by its cover because somebody may look straight but they gay and somebody may look gay but oh y'all I wish I could some. That's why you can't judge people because you don't even know you may be sitting next to a millionaire. Look at your neighbor say you better don't judge me because I look like what you think I look like because you don't even know I've been anointed to bless you. God can I preach up in here. Some of you miss it. Some you miss it because you're so concerned about what they look like uh, that you, you have a form of godliness preach passage yeah. you look godly but you're crazy preach passages yeah. you look holy but you ain't even sanctified yeah. you look righteous but you're wicked like the devil cannot preach in here and the person who don't even look like it preach passage yeah. that's why you gotta be careful you gotta be careful of people who look they look at they talk godly they talk they talk like they know the scripture they they have a form of godliness they they know bible they've been in a book but the book hasn't been in them they they know scripture but they ain't know the holy ghost can i preach up in here they've been to church but they never been to christ they got religion but they ain't got relationship preach pastor Jeff. oh god i feel something pushing me tell your neighbor say don't judge me because i don't look like you don't judge me because i got on sneakers don't judge me because of the crowd I hang around. I, I may not look like much on the outside, but if you know what I'm carrying on the inside, if you knew who I was, cut your neighbor, say don't judge me because I may not speak in tongues, at least say good morning in English. God help me, deliver me from believers who speak in tongues but can't even say good morning in English. Deliver me from the sanctified people who roll their eyes at everybody, but they won't even clean out their own backyard. Deliver me from hypocrite. Oh, Jesus. Oh, yeah, yeah, there, there, yeah. His issue, his, his issue, somebody holler, issue. 
His issue, his issue, his issue, his issue is, is not external. His issue is internal. And isn't it amazing that you can always be mad with other people's issue because it ain't your issue. Because you got amnesia that you got an issue. Tell him, say, everybody got something wrong in here. Look down your road, say, everybody from the pulpit to the pew got something that if it wasn't for the grace of God, you would be, oh God, don't look at me crazy. Don't let me call your stuff out today. Come on up in here. The Bible says such were some of us. Come on up. But for the grace of God, would you look down your road and say the only reason why my stuff is not on CNN is because of the grace of God. The only reason my stuff didn't make it to Facebook or Twitter is because of the grace of God. The only reason why my stuff is not on the news is because of the grace of God. Because I've been to places I shouldn't have been. I've done some stuff I shouldn't have done. I slept with some joker I shouldn't have slept with. But the grace of God. Is there anybody in here that is grateful for grace? Oh, touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, I haven't always been safe. I haven't always been holy. I haven't been always righteous. But thank God he looked beyond my fault. Can I preach up in here? I said he looks beyond my fault and he sees. There is no distinction between internal sin and external sin. There is no big sin and little sin with God. There, there is no big sin. The liar is as guilty as the murderer. Yeah, you ain't murder nobody but you lie on your tax return. Oh, preach Pastor Jazz. Can I preach up in here? You ain't slept with nobody, but you've been playing with yourself. Y'all ain't ready for me. Can I preach up in here? Y'all ain't ready for me. I came with fire this morning. Come on up in here. You ain't creeping around, but you ain't been faithful either. Come on up in here. Oh, come on. Y'all ain't ready for me. Y'all ain't ready for me. The only reason why some of y'all are living holy is because you ran out of gas. Can I preach up in here? Can I preach up in here? The only reason... God. Oh, I feel God pushing me right here. I said, I feel the Holy Ghost right here. All have sin. What the scripture said, all have sin. Touch it and say, that includes you with your fine self. That includes you with your Louis Vuitton. That includes you with your Gucci. That includes you with your night. All have sin and come short. But thank God Jesus made up the difference. Can I preach in here like I got the Holy Ghost? Slap five at your neighbor and say, Jesus made up the difference. All have sin. And come short. And come short. And come short. And come short. That's why I got to shout. Because I came so short he could have killed me. I came so short he could have destroyed me. But I'm so glad when I think of the goodness. Can I preach up in here? When I think of the goodness of Jesus. And all that he's done for me. I shout over the fact that he looked beyond my fault. And he sees. In fact, in fact, in, in, in the same week, one betrays him. One denies him. Ten deserted him. And one doubted him. And all of them are on the same podium. The betrayer, the denier, the deserter, and the doubter. All are in the same ship. And you scared of who's sitting next to you. Oh! He picked the betrayer. He picked the denier. He picked the deserters. And he picked the doubters. My God, Jesus, it ain't looking too good for you. Because most of you, if you had any of those people, you tend to distance yourself. 
And yet Jesus hangs out for three years with people who he know was going to desert him, going to betray him, going to deny him, and going to doubt him. Because Jesus was never concerned about his reputation. Oh, preach Dr. Jazz. He, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, he was never concerned about what people thought about him. He had such a bad reputation. He was known for always hanging around prostitute hookers and drunks. You, 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 you scared to even just sit around them. You, he, he, was so, he was so radical. He was so radical. He was known for always being at a house party with, with hookers and drunks. And you scared to go to happy hour. Preach pastor. Jeff. Are you, scared, you scared to be seen with certain people. It's because you think too highly of yourself. But uh, he became sin for us so we can be made the righteousness of God. When last have you rubbed off of a hooker? When, when last have you talked to a, a pedophile? When last have you dealt with people that society has put on the outskirt? It's because you ain't trying to get dirty, but when you were dirty, he became God. Y'all didn't hear me. Would you rub on your neighbor and say, I don't mind touching you. I, I don't mind. I don't care. I don't mind touching you because he was wounded for our, y'all in here. I said he was wounded for our transgression. Tell your neighbor say he got down and dirty so I can get up and if he got down and dirty for me I can get down and dirty for him would you snap five at your neighbor and say you attending a down and dirty church come on tell them say that's the kind of church VG said if you want a squeaky clean church there's 20 other church in the DMV but if you want to belong to a radical church who don't mind if there's a prostitute a pimp and a preacher in the same section open your out and give God a radical praise. Ooh, 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 ah, ah, here it is. There, there is. There is somebody. There is somebody. You are not. You are not. You are not a betrayer. You are not. You are not. You are not. You're not the one who deny. You're not the one who deserted. But you are a doubter. You, 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 you in betrayed, you in denied, and you in desert. But your sin or your challenge, I would call it challenge, is not external. It is, it is, it is not external. No, you don't do the booty call. It's not external. You don't, you don't back it up and drop it like it's hot. It's not external. You, you don't smell like you've been smoking a reef, are you? It's not external. There's no money marks on you like if you've been doing drugs uh, uh, but your 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 issue your your issue is is internal you, you you're battling something you're battling the double d can i preach up in here uh, you're battling you're battling doubt and you're battling disappointment because i want to surmise can i preach come on sit down let me take my time i want to surmise that whenever i am operating in a place of doubt uh, it's many times time because of disappointment God oh, y'all miss your cue by did that that whenever 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 I am I am doubting God or I'm doubting myself it's because I've experienced some disappointment now I, I want a real church this morning last Sunday was the fake church I want the real church have you ever been disappointed with God come on I preach up in here uh, come on where you at have you ever have you ever been disappointed with yourself come on have you have you ever kicked yourself and say what were you thinking have you ever got out the wrong bed and say had you lost your mind have you ever made some mistake I came to preach for somebody have you ever messed up so bad that you're disappointed in yourself and most of the time whenever we are experiencing disappointment it's not in our children it's in ourselves it's not in the people we're in relationship with it's in ourselves we self talk ourselves we say my God, you know better. You knew they weren't really for you. You knew they were playing you. You, you, you knew, you knew, you saw all the signs. But what made 
you stay so long? What what made you put up? Have you ever been there? Have you ever have you ever had disappointment over yourself? And the longer you feed yourself that kind of conversation, uh, you'll move from disappointment to doubt. Because honestly, are y'all still here? The the biggest disappointment you have is not with other people. Uh, the biggest disappointment, Justin, is not even the disappointment that you have with yourself. Uh, the biggest disappointment is God. I know y'all don't want to be real because your mama told you uh, you better not talk to God like that because he going to kill you. Uh, but I saw the kind of God is so secure in who he is. Uh, he don't mind me telling him that I'm sometimes upset with him. Y'all ain't ready for me. I said, I, I said, he has no problem. Have you ever been disappointed with God? Has God ever let you down? Has you, ha oh, come on, have you ever prayed for this and it turned out that way? Have you ever believed God to heal your mama but he takes so, to the other side have you ever thought that God was going to deliver your children and they still have God ever disappointed you because I want to suggest sister Pat I want to suggest Susan that while you call him doubting Thomas that the doubting comes from disappointment okay let me paint the picture y'all still here can I preach like Charles Buddha remember for three years Jesus talking about the kingdom three years they excited the disciples buy into the vision that we go into Jerusalem to turn over Jerusalem and we're gonna rule with him for three years they are invested of their time their talent and their energy they expecting that when they get to Jerusalem they're gonna be sitting on the throne with Jesus they write it to Jerusalem and the one who healed the sick the one who raised the dead the one who opened blinded eyes allow himself to be arrested allows himself to be crucified are y'all still here and I can imagine Thomas looking at all of this and saying, wait a minute, for the last three years, I saw you got all power and you can't even get power to come down from the cross. I, I, I saw you raise Lazarus. I, I saw you heal the sick. I saw you deliver people. And yet, here it is. We are now left with a dead Jesus. God help me right here. Y'all say, listen, listen, listen. It is not an unbeliever. He is not an unbeliever. He's a, don't miss this, Pat Jones. He's a doubting believer. I told y'all don't miss it. Jimmy. He is not an unbeliever. He is a, that's an oxymoron. How can I be a doubting believer? He knows the Lord. In fact, he has known the Lord for three years. That teaches you and I, just because you've been saved for 20 years, don't mean you ain't got doubts. Would you touch any of us a neighbor? Don't judge me because sometimes I doubt. Come on. He has seen the Savior perform miracle, cast out demon, but the stronghold that's on Thomas is doubt. You would not know he's a doubter unless, listen VGC, you don't know he's a doubter until he opens his mouth. Ooh, yes, you see, you see, his, I'm doing the best I can. You, you see, his struggle is not external. But the moment, you see, nobody knows you're a fool until you open your mouth. Nobody knows that you're dumb until you, until you, are y'all Nobody knows you're crazy until you start acting crazy. He, he's, he's not hot tempered like the sons of thunder. He's not quick to want to call down fire to consume people. No, this disciple, like about, I think it's 50 of y'all, this disciple struggles inwardly his struggle is one that many of us can if you're honest identify with it is what we honestly secretly struggle with it's the monster that eats at us especially listen when the word is preached did she say in 30 days 
especially when the word is spoken over your life, the spirit of doubt starts creeping in. Did the Lord really say? If you eat from this tree, that you will die. Thomas' struggle is not drugs, it's not money, it's not sex. His struggle is believing. Believing in a God, believing in himself, and believing in his gifts and his abilities. He has a God doubting problem. That's why you haven't made a bold move so far. And it's the end of April. That's why you still haven't stepped out of your comfort zone. That's why you haven't started that business. That's why you haven't gotten engaged. That's why you haven't gone on that date. That's, that's why you haven't subscribed to being in the gym. It's because you either have God doubt or yourself. That's why you haven't gone on that vacation by yourself. You don't know, you doubt if you can be happy by yourself. That's why you haven't broken up with that crazy unfulfilled relationship because you don't know if you can just have joy or by yourself. You got self doubt. That's why you haven't gone back to the bank. That's why you haven't written that business plan. That's why you haven't started that business. That's why you didn't get involved in a V group. That's why you rather be by yourself. Because you have not God doubt. But you got self doubt. That's why you haven't started that hairstyle with the truck all over the city. Because you don't know if it's going to succeed. That's why you haven't bought out your new clothing line. You're not too sure if they're going to like it. I was watching the book of John Gray last night. And John Gray on Oprah was watching. And they said, you need to go into the studio and sing a song for the church. He, and they said, he said, I don't want to. They said, why? He said, because I'm scared of rejection. Preach Pastor Jay. He said, because the last CD I put out, only five people bought them. I, I don't want to put nothing out there. Would you push your neighbor on the back and say, you're going to have to go back out there again. Push them real hard. I said, push them on the back. Push them. That's why you work in a pitiful nine to five job. It ain't fulfilling. It ain't satisfying. It ain't even paying your rent. It ain't paying your bill. But you rather stay in the place of convenience because you don't know if you got what it takes. I need you to slap five with three people and say I got a prophecy for you everything you need is already in you God y'all in here I said I need you to prophesy to your neighbor and say everything you need to succeed is all I need you to put your hand on your soul and say I got what it takes God I feel something pushing me I said I got what it takes would you slap five with your neighbor and say you got what it takes to climb every mountain to go through every sea, to go through every valley. If at first you don't succeed, try and try and try. Who told you? Who told you? You were naked. Who told you? You can't pass the church with men in it. Who told you? You got to be married to be complete. Who been lying to you? Who told you that life ends after divorce? The devil is a liar. Who told you that having an abortion is going to send you to hell? Who told who you been talking to? A bunch of snakes. Preach Pastor Jay. Would you pull your neighbor by the head and say you better stop listening to those snakes because they ain't got nothing to say. Okay, so show this is what I mean. Children, it's a neighbor. 
every snake ain't crawling. Some of them are walking. Okay, I see y'all. Come on, say every snake ain't crawling. Some of them are walking. The most dangerous snake is a snake in high heels. Please, Pastor. The most dangerous snake. Look down your wall. Make sure you ain't sitting next to a snake. Make sure you ain't sitting next to nobody slimy, nobody hating on you. Say, neighbor, I ain't trying to sit next to nobody. That when I break out in a praise, you're going to look at me all crazy. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me. I got to move on. But somebody reach out and grab that snake. Don't grab it by the tail, grab it by the head. Preach Pastor Jeff. He said, I'll give you power to tread upon serpent. I said, I'll give you power to tread upon serpent. You ain't got to be a scared of nothing. He's not, he's a, 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 Doubting believer. There's a difference between doubting and unbelief. Can I preach today? There is, there is a difference between doubting and unbelief. Can I expound on that? Doubt, doubt is a head thing. Unbelief is a heart thing. There is a difference between Doubt and unbelief. Doubt is the problem of the intellect. That's why Thomas said, until I see him. Oh, until I can process. Until I can put my hands in where the nails were. Until I can put my hands where his side was. I ain't going to believe. He's looking for intellectual explanation on a divine opportunity, preach Pastor Jay. Would you touch it with a neighbor? Something God's about to do in your life, you won't be able to explain it. That's the wrong neighbor. Come on, look down your road, say neighbor. In the next 30 days, God's about to do something in your life. You won't be able to explain it. He's about to open a door you're not even qualified for. He's about to give you that opportunity you're not even gifted for. Tell your neighbor, say, my mind can't comprehend it. But I know he's going to, can I preach in here? Pull your neighbor by the hand, say, neighbor, I can't even explain it. All I want to do is experience it. I just said something. Tell your neighbor, say, I didn't come for an explanation. I came to experience it. I can't explain what I'm feeling, but I'm experiencing in the power of the Holy Ghost I can't explain what's on top of me but I know, all I know it's like fire touch your neighbor like you're about to pull their hands off and say neighbor I can't tell you what makes me run I can't tell you what makes me shout I can't tell you what makes me scream but I dare to tell you taste and see that the Lord is tell your neighbor say try it yourself try between doubt and unbelief. The person wants to believe, but has question. Okay. He wants to believe, but he has. I need you to look down your neighbor. Look down your right. I'm telling y'all to talk a lot, but this is going to be, it's a neighbor. God has no problem with you having questions. Have you ever questioned God? He has no problem saying, but say, neighbor, his biggest concern is can you handle the answer? Okay, y'all ain't ready for me. Y'all ain't ready, y'all. Can you, can you? And he answers three ways. He answers three ways. Wait. Yes. No. In fact, he answers four ways. Wait. Yes. No. Wait. 
until I see him put my hands in his side, see the nail print, I will only believe. That was Sunday. Now, the first time he shows up at church, Thomas is not there. Huh? First time he shows up, Thomas is not there. Why? Because he's disappointed and he has. Last time he saw Jesus, he was on a cross. He didn't pick up the Jerusalem papers to say he's risen. Have you ever thought between Easter and this Sunday where Thomas went? A week. He's not in Bible study. A week he didn't make the prayer call. A week he didn't show. Thomas, where did you go for that week? It's not rocket science. Where do you go? When you experience disappointment where do you go oh I see you at the bar oh 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 I see you on the golf course oh oh I I see wait where do you go oh I see you I see you surfing the internet on site that you shouldn't be looking when you experience that and disappointment. Where do you escape? Oh, I see you. I gotta, I gotta get a joint. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta level off. I need, I need, I just, I just need a, a extra shot. That's why you still got that bottle under your bed. That's why, that's why you're still in touch with the pusher. Where do you go when your heart is broken? Where, where, do, you, where do you find release? Where is your place of escape? Now, Thomas is known as Thomas the twin. Did I say what, the twin? Because there's Thomas... Judas, which is his real name, and there's Judas Iscariot. Jesus had two Judas in the group. So to distinguish one from the other, he will say Thomas the twin. I have to make this point. Why? Because all of us have a split personality. There is the believer. And there is the doubter. There's the calm. And then there's the crazy. There's the settle. And then there's the snake. There is Simon. And then there is Peter. Every believer. Split personality. You, you sometimes good, and you sometimes bad. You sometimes happy. Can I preach this morning? And sometimes you sad. You sometimes sane, and you sometimes insane. You sometimes got it going on. Sometimes you forget to comb your hair. You sometimes hauling. I wish somebody would be honest. That's why Paul said, when I want to do good. When I want to do right. Can I preach like I'm feeling? I end up doing, oh, wretched man. Actually, they say, which one of you came to church this morning? God, get an answer, get an answer. Last week you were friendly. 
Today you're cold like hell. Can I preach in here? Last week you were nice. This week you're mean as a skunk. Come on. Last week you like me. This week you can't even stand me. Which one are you? Tell him, said, that's why I need a pill. Okay, now tell him, said, that's why I need Pentecost. I need something to level me off. Y'all ain't ready. Because sometimes I'm up. Can I preach up in here? And sometimes I'm down. Can I preach up? Sometimes I'm happy. And sometimes I'm sad. Sometimes I'm glad. And sometimes I'm mad. Sometimes I'm glad she's on the other side. And sometimes I'm angry that she's not here. Preach, black woman. Split personality. Look down your road, say neighbor. If this week I've been mean to you, that was the other me. That's the world. Come on, say neighbor. If last week I didn't talk to you, come on, say that was the other me. Y'all ain't ready. Say last week if I was acting all bougie, it's because that was the other me. You see, in every person there's a greater and a lesser. Can I preach? Tell him, say, which one came to church this morning? Now, I'm looking for the greater VGC. I'm looking for the greater praise. I'm looking for the greater power. Sometimes, sometimes he doubt. Sometimes he's optimistic. And sometimes he's pessimistic. Sometimes he sees the glass half full and sometimes he sees the glass half empty first day jesus gets up he in nowhere where is he he high he ain't in church and because he's not in church he missed five blessing can i give it to y'all oh god i'm sorry i'm keeping y'all too long yeah i he missed the presence of the lord Tell me, say, neighbor, that's why I don't care who disappoints you in VGC. Don't you miss church because you're going to miss the presence of the Lord. Where y'all at? Come on, y'all. Come on, say, neighbor, I don't care if they talk about you, if they don't like what you got on, if they're sitting next to you with their lips poked out. Uh, tell me, say, neighbor, I ain't going to miss the presence of the Lord. Uh, you see, whenever you miss church, you miss the presence of God. And I don't know about anybody, I got to experience his presence. I got to be in the presence of the Lord because in the presence of the Lord, there is... That's number one. That's number one. That's number one. That's number one. People on the screen, you got to move. The presence of the Lord. He missed the presence of the Lord. Number two, he missed the power of the Lord. Number two, he missed the what? The power of the, he missed the presence of the Lord. But number two, he missed the power of the Lord. It's right in verse number 19. He walked through the door and the door wasn't open. Okay, y'all missed it. I said he walked through the door and the door wasn't open open. Can I prophesy to just 20 of y'all before I lose my voice? God's about to send you through a door without opening it. God, y'all ain't man. Okay, y'all miss your cue. I said he's about to say, I'm sorry, I'm too loaded this morning. Y'all still thinking about Easter, but slap five with your neighbor. Say, you're about to walk through a door. You ain't even got to open it. He's gonna just let you walk through it. You ain't got to you're going to miss, you're going to miss, you're going to miss. Whenever you miss church, you miss the presence of the Lord. You miss the power of the Lord. Here's number three. You miss, miss the peace of the Lord. Ooh, y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Tell me, say, neighbor, don't you get peace and peace mixed up. Oh, God. Tell me, say, don't get some peace and miss the peace. Oh, God. Oh, y'all missed it. Okay, I'm just talking to the young people. Tell me, say, make sure there's a difference between peace and peace. Come on up here. And he said, this peace I give to you. The world didn't give it to you and the world came he missed it when you miss church you miss the presence of the lord when you miss church you miss the power of the lord when you miss church when you're not where you're supposed to be you miss the i'm not talking about if you're working i'm not talking about if you're sick i'm not talking about if you have surgery but there's somebody who is out there on social media that should have been here but because of doubt and disappointment you are cowards staying home and watching it but if you oh come on preaching here but if you can get the courage to get back in the place in the presence of god there is fullness of 
fact, you know somebody, you know somebody, you know somebody who didn't go to another church, they're just home. I ain't talking about if they join another church. they just home because they have experienced doubt or oh, disappointment. You better call them and say, you don't want to miss church next Sunday. Because next Sunday you're going to experience the presence of the Lord, the power of the Lord, the peace of the Lord. But here's number four. Hey, when you miss it, you'll miss the praises of the Lord. Okay, y'all miss your cue. You going to miss what? Oh, yeah, I feel like preaching right here. I'm preaching better than you're responding. But I, I said, you're going to miss what? The praises, the praises of the, and he said to them, he said, he showed them his hands and side, and the disciples were overjoyed. Okay, y'all miss your cute little shout. Tell anybody, say, when God shows up, you got to be overjoyed over his presence. When you know the presence of the Lord is here, okay, y'all miss it. I said, when you know the presence of the Lord is here, you don't have to wait for tackle to play the organ. You can open your mouth and praise God, because when praises go up, his presence... I gotta move on. I gotta. Are y'all still here? Uh, 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 he 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 wasn't in church. Tell him he said, "Be on your post next Sunday." Come on, say, "Be in your same seat." Come on. I don't care who look at you. She always sit in that seat. She always in the. Come on, say, "Yes, I am." I ain't trying to sit in the back row and experience any distraction. I ain't trying to sit next to nobody who's asking me for chewing gum. I came to experience the presence of the Lord. I came to experience the power of the Lord. I came to experience the peace of the Lord. And I came to experience the praises of the Lord. But here's number five. When you ain't not in church, you're going to miss the promotion of the Lord. Preach, Pastor Jazz. Would you touch your neighbor? Say, neighbor, that's why I had to come back this Sunday. Because he's passing out promotion. Promotion does not come from the east or the west. It does not come from the north or the south. It's coming from the Lord. Slap so five at your neighbor. And say, you're about to get a promotion on your job. You're about to get a promotion in your family. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. So I find that your neighbor and say, Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Promotion is coming your way. You are about to expand, you are about to enlarge. That's why you have to come a week later. A week later, promotion is coming. Somebody ought to open your mouth, throw your head back, and scream like you lost your mind. You're going to miss the presence of the Lord. When you're not in the place, you're going to miss the power. When you're not in your place, you're going to miss his peace. You're going to miss his praises. You're going to miss his promotion. Can I give you all an extra? When you're not in your place, you're going to miss his provision. God, I got to get, get out of here. Would you slap five at your neighbor and say next week is the beginning of a new month. And the Lord just told me to tell you, he already supplied everything you need. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches. One week. No, Thomas. The Sunday he gets up. No, Thomas. He gets up. He shows himself. And there's no Thomas. And everybody says, when Thomas shows it, Man! You missed it! I hope after church today you call people who stayed home and say, man, what you miss? And listen, don't tell him you miss pastor preaching. You say, you miss his presence. You miss his power. You miss his peace. You miss his promotion. And you miss the... Would you touch your neighbor say, neighbor? I don't care if it's hot like hell in here or if it's cold like an icebox. Bring a sweater, but don't miss church. Okay, y'all ain't ready for me. Come on, say, neighbor, if you got to take it off or if you got to put on more clothes, don't you let the devil distract you that you missed the provision that the Lord has for you. You think the Lord didn't know it was going to be cold this morning? He knew it. He wants you to jump a little higher. He wants you to scream a little louder. He wants you to dance a little better. Pull your neighbor by the head and say, my room is about to catch on fire. Cause when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for 
me my son touch him and say I missed it have anybody ever missed it has anybody ever missed it I mean you know what sin is right sin is missing the mark I'm through sin is missing the I was aiming to shoot the P and I end up shooting the T I was I missed it Thomas 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 Dr. Carpenter he missed it he missed church he was missing in action he was missing on the ambassador board he was missing on the praise team he was missing on the parking lot tell me it's a neighbor pastor may not recognize that you're missing but God does now look at you and say neighbor wherever you step from step back in oh God you missed it he missed it he missed it, he missed it. and don't be hard on him he might have overslept but I say he missed it because of doubt. Jesus gets up. He restores Peter. And a week later, the disciples are at Blatonsburg High School. And the doors are closed. Bill, close the door. Because he doesn't need a door to be open for him to walk in. Tell your neighbor, say, I serve the God who don't need you to open the door. When the ambassadors open the door, it's not for him. Because he's omnipresent. He's omniscient. He's the God that is everywhere at all times. The Bible said they were in the same place at the same time. And there wasn't even a knock on the door. Because how is it the door knock on the own door? It says, I am the door. Y'all ain't ready for me. <laughs> Tell him, he said, that's why he doesn't need you to open the door for him. Because he is the door. I don't know what they were doing in that room. Maybe they were holding hand and praising God. Because the more you start praising God, that's when his presence shows up. Look down your road, say, neighbor, if you want him in your section, all you got to do is open your mouth. If you want him in your section, all you got to do is lift up your hands. Would you look down your road, say, neighbor, as soon as you start praising him, he'll come in your section. He'll walk up and down your pew. He'll walk in your section. Would you look down your road and say, neighbor, I don't know about you this morning, but I need him in my section. I need him right by here. I need him to go by my family. I need him to go by my job. I need him to go by the hospital. When I dare you to open your mouth and to praise him like he's already in your section. Like he's already in your room. We gotta get out of here. I pull your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, one week later, that's the day the Lord showed back up. I said he showed back up. Would you slap five? with your neighbor and to look at Jesus he got up early on Sunday morning and on his way to glory he made a U-turn I need somebody to make a U-turn because God told me he's about to make a U-turn in your life pull your neighbor by the hand like you're about to pull it off and say neighbor oh neighbor he's about to turn it around 
on your behalf. I need you to pull your neighbor by the head and say, neighbor, it may look like you're late because it's one week later, but you're never late when God is on time because he's on time. I said he's an on time. Is he an on time God? I'm through preaching. I'm just getting happy all by myself, but I've seen the lightning flash and I've heard the thunder roll. I've seen sin breaking dashing about to conquer my soul, but I heard the voice of Jesus. He promised never to leave me and never to leave me alone. Would you pull your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, he came back a week later just for me. He came back to heal me. He came back to deliver me. God bless you. Have a great day. And the Lord keep you. And the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And the Lord give you peace. I said the Lord give you peace. Would you slap by the Geneva and say, neighbor, one week later, he's making a way. One week later, he's opening a door. One week later, he's healing my body. One week later, he's saving my soul. Is there anybody? I feel like preaching right here. Is there anybody? I feel like hollering right here. Is there anybody who said, I got an after Easter praise? I got an Easter praise. I got an after Easter praise. Pull your neighbor and say, neighbor, last week I couldn't shout because I had on my Easter outfit. But this Sunday, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my hear nobody. I can't hear nobody. Is there anybody who got a seven days praise? Is there anybody who got a seven days praise? Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Throw your head back and give God your best praise. Has he been good to you? Has he been good to you? Has he made a way for you? Has he opened the door for you? Has he picked you up? Has he turned you around? I feel like feeding you. Is there anybody hungry? I feel like feeding you. Is there anybody? I feel like feeding you. Is there anybody hungry? Are there any hungry people? Are there any thirsty people? Open your mouth and tell them, feed me, feed me, feed me, till I want no. We're the hungry believers. What you still doing in your section? What you still doing back there? If you're hungry, you're the one down here. And tell God I came for after Easter miracle, after Easter blessing, after Easter breakthrough. Won't he show up? Won't he do it? Won't he make a way? Won't he open a door? Won't he pick you up? Won't he turn you around? Won't he, won't he, won't he, won't he? I said, won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? He's a God who can turn it around. Somebody just turn around. He's a God that will turn it around. He's a God that can turn you around. He'll pick you up. He'll turn you around. He'll plant you up. Anybody still hungry? Is there anybody that's still hungry? Tell the Lord I came on the seventh day. I came a week later to give you my best praise, to give you my best shout, to give you my best days. I came on seventh day. I feel like preaching. Ooh, I feel like preaching. It's like fire. I said it's like fire. It's like fire. Ooh, I feel something pushing me. Push up your neighbor. Say, I don't know about you, but last Sunday I was keeping it in. But it's like fire. It's like 